Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another new episode of Red Light Questions. I hope you guys are looking forward to this week's episode. You guys seemed real excited about it when I announced the return of this series in the last episode, and I'm really looking forward to recording this video here today. And I just want to let you all know, I've got a different setup for how I normally read the comments. So if I'm like a little slower today reading the comments, I do apologize. I'll get used to it as we move on and continue to make these videos. But I'm really excited to dive into the very first comment right here from AH. You said, cool to hear my comment read. A follow-up, if you ain't making mistakes, you ain't learning. You're exactly right about that. Then you said, from what I can gather from Sean's channel, the OG is currently torn down and undergoing some massive upgrades. I think they might have filmed some OKC in March slash April. He was taking the OG to race nights around then. I'm wondering if that was qualifying for America's list for after no prep kings or if they were back to normal list racing. Now, you are exactly right with everything you said right there. They were filming the beginning of this summer, or before summer. It was March, April, maybe even May, if I'm not mistaken. It was a couple weeks before No Prep Kings actually started, whenever that was. They were filming a new episode or a new season for the 405 show. And what they were doing with that season was the same thing we saw with the last season of the 405, where it was qualifying for Street Outlaws America's List. Because as we're guessing right now, the next street show that the 405 guys will partake in after No Prep Kings is done will be America's List once again. So with Sean doing all of this work to the car right now, I think this kind of really like dictates that there's two paths that his performance in this most recent season could go. Now, I was actually going to have this be the main topic for this week's episode of Street Race Talk, so I don't want to go into it too in-depth, because I think with this series, two red light questions, I think I'm going to post these on Wednesdays, and Street Race Talk, obviously, on Fridays. I don't know if I have a video on Thursday, so if the title and thumbnail of this video is The Murder Nova, then Friday's episode of Street Race Talk, The Murder Nova, again, it'll be two videos in a row where we're just talking about The Murder Nova for the main point, but I will elaborate on it a bit here because, A.H., you left your comment about it. I think the two paths that they could be on right now are either Sean, unfortunately, didn't qualify for Stradales America's List. He's doing all this work to the car so he can get there to America's List whenever they do the qualifying again. Or he barely made it there by the skin of his teeth because in the videos they were making they weren't seeming like they were doing too hot they made it seem like they were having a rough time so maybe he barely made it there by the skin of his teeth realized that if he leaves the car as is and he goes on to race in america's list he's not going to be competitive and he's probably gonna be down towards the bottom list so they're doing all these huge changes and stuff in preparation for america's list so it's either we're going to see him on America's List with a brand new car. Unfortunately, we're not going to see him at all on his America's List. It's literally like, it's night or day. It's, I mean, it's, he's making it. He's not making it. It sucks that that's the situation is. Because with the, I like, I feel like the Murder Nova should be a shoe in for America's List. Because that's, I mean, we've said this before. That is the most iconic street race car of all time. You're having street dollars on America's List. I know it's like, who cares if someone's not fast or competitive at the time. That's all that matters. But, I mean, with the Murder Nova, he was, what, number six at the end? of this last season America's List was in top five pretty much the whole time. Just, I really do hope they do end up being on this next season of, of America's List. But one of the reasons I think why they're doing all these great changes could be possibly because he unfortunately didn't make it for this next season of America's List. We will all just have to wait and see them. Then t on Money Ninja said, what happened to your sister's room? We're only in there for the streams, the Mint Shack, as Hank the Tree Man named it. That is only for the stream and stuff. All the videos and stuff will still be filmed in here. Then moving on over to the next comment here from Troy Jacobs. You said, so is Reaper just a bad word in general? He has said multiple times his hatred for a bunch of the 405 drivers. What do you know about his beef with the 405ers? Now, I've always said this. I don't follow along with the stuff that Reaper posts because, I mean, no disrespect to him, but he's, I mean, it's kind of all over the place with this stuff. And also, too, he looks so scary in his thumbnails. I'm not... I, I'm too scared to even watch his videos. So I get all my Reaper information from you guys. And people always say they don't like him, this and that. He's a jerk. He's mean, this and that. I don't have any opinion like that of him. I've never met him. I've never had an interaction with him. So until then, I'm not going to form any opinion on him because I've never interacted with him myself. So why should I say I don't like him if I don't have any reason to not like him? So that's why I've always stayed completely neutral with everything about Reaper. But... <laughs> Reaper himself makes it very clear he really doesn't like a lot of the guys from the 405, most specifically being 
Big Chief. It seems like every time he's talking bad or talking against the 405 and the drivers and stuff with the show, he's always got something to say with Chief. So I don't know too many of the details about it. I mean, to be completely honest, if I had to guess, it mainly be the stuff that kind of aired on the show. I mean, Chief essentially kicked Reaper off the list, but he did that because he had the fiberglass body and he just had steel roof and quarters glued to it or something like that. I don't remember the whole ordeal of how that all played out, but Chief made the decision to take Reaper off the list. I don't think we've seen him on the 405 Street stuff since then. He might have tried to race in the Daily Driver race, but then Farm Truck Agent told him he couldn't race there because he had a car that was built too much and what it was past what they were kind of uh, describing as the daily driver level and allowing into the race. So I don't know the whole ordeal with Reaper. I know he doesn't like Chief and I don't know why he doesn't like everyone. I assume it's just like simply like examples like I just said. There's been many times where they've had their differences and unfortunately Reaper seems to always get the bad end of it, it seems like. And again, I'm not going to say I like him, I dislike him, because I've never met him. I'm not going to form any opinion. I'm going to stay completely neutral until I have my first interaction with the man himself, James Goad, a.k.a. the Reaper. Then Kevin Stevenson said, probably headed out west to film in warmer weather during the winter. Now, I believe you're referring to me talking about JJ filming a whole bunch of shows out west. Now, all of these shows they filmed out west, if I'm not mistaken, were filmed right when the whole pandemic stuff started or just before. Regardless of when it was, they have a road out there in Vegas. I believe that's where all this stuff has been. They were out there for Fastest in America, the current Memphis show, the All Girls show will be out there. They filmed a whole bunch of stuff out there on that road in Vegas. Sin City Showdown was another one. And I believe that they film all their stuff out there because the road's easy for them. They've been there many times before. They've got everything down with the permits and this and that. It's easy for them to go out there and film there. And also, too, with the whole pandemic and stuff, they were limited to where they were able to go, and they were able to continue to film there. So that's one of the reasons why it kind of just makes sense that we've seen so much stuff from literally the exact same road for so many different shows. Then moving over to the next comment from Cool Truckin'. You said, my question is, what is Sim going to do with the Idaho No Prep Kings tickets? And what do you think of the fact Falcon. Sim Discovery Plus is less than 10 bucks a month. A 10, that's a lot of money. The Falcon, I believe you're referring to the Falcon from the Street Racing Channel. That thing is so cool, man. Seeing them race that, Tommy's the one that's been racing it. That thing is so cool. I love this steering wheel they have in that too. And also, I'm going to discuss this in Street Race Talk as well. But the dart they got, oh my gosh. That thing is so cool. But with the Idaho No Prep Kings tickets, I don't know. You're the one that gave them to me. Do you want them back? Because I'm not going to use them. I apologize, I can't. If you want them back, let me know. If not, I'll try and give them away to somebody here on the channel. I don't want to do just a normal giveaway because I could give it to someone from Australia who unfortunately won't be able to go to the race. So what I want to do is if I'm giving it to someone, I want to give it to someone that I know will definitely go to the event. So if anyone wants to go to the Idaho No Prep Kings race, cool trucking, if you don't want it back and you actually want me to give them away to someone... If anyone wants them, leave a comment in the comment section down below this episode of Red Light Questions. This could be a giveaway through Red Light Questions, giving away the No Prep Kings tickets. Let me know if any of you got them. We got two tickets to the Idaho No Prep Kings race. Let me know in the comment section down below if any of you would want to go and would want the tickets. And Cool Truck and also let me know what you would like me to do with the tickets because you're the one that sent them to me in the first place. And then Proud Toaster 211 said, has anyone here been to a No Prep Kings event? Hey, look at that. I'm staying right on the same subject. I'm thinking about going, but I want to know if the Super Super VIPs are worth the hype. Now, from what I've heard from people going to No Prep Kings, I've heard nothing but positive experiences. Everyone says nothing but awesome, positive stuff about the whole No Prep Kings event. The Super VIP tickets, are they worth it? I don't know how much they cost. I don't know the access you gain with that. I honestly don't know. I do apologize about that. But from what I have heard, I've heard nothing but positive and amazing things from people's experiences going to No Prep Kings. Then Joe Wright said, love red light questions. Thank you. Thank you for watching, man. Paul Davis said, awesome, Sim. You don't talk too fast. Haha, <laughs> your energy is awesome, TTVE. Thank you so much for that, man. Then D Skag Leon said, red light questions returns. Hell yes, great video, Sim. TTVE, KOKO. God bless. Thank you so very much, man. Then Joe Wright said, headed to Petersburg this morning. 95 today and tomorrow. It will be like air conditioning compared to Darlington, the sweat box of the South. Wish you could be there. I hope you had a good time, man. Or, or I don't, did that event happen already? Nevertheless, hope you have a good time or had a good time. And also too, 95 degrees, man. I wish it was still that warm out here. It's dropping like crazy. 
Literally, today's August 31st. It's 84 degrees today. September 1st, tomorrow, down to 77. And I don't think we go above 80 again, probably for the rest of the year. It, the weather in the Chicagoland area absolutely sucks. And something I've been thinking about a lot, I love summer so much. Like, the warm weather being outside, having the windows open. I don't have the window open here because I don't want the neighbors to hear me hollering when I film the videos, but I love everything about summer and the warm weather. I, like, saying I hate and despise winter and the cold isn't even, a, like, I can't put into words how much I hate the cold in the Chicago winters. It, it sucks here. It is awful. So something I've always wondered and I want to try is trying to live somewhere for like a year, like Florida or something like that, or Georgia, somewhere where it's super nice and hot people might say, oh, it's too humid and stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, the heat does not bother me. It doesn't matter how humid or hot it is. I love it. I hate the cold. My hands and feet go numb. You guys know we got the disease, rain ours. Go on my Instagram, Sammy's XYZ, and you'll see a picture of exactly what I'm talking about with my hands going numb. I can't even walk down the cold aisle of the grocery store without my hands going numb. I hate everything about the cold. And like coming into school, the whole time you're in school is when it's the shitty weather. But thankfully, summers are always awesome and nice here. But I've just wondered, like, what would it be like to be somewhere where it's warm the entire year? A lot of you might sound like, well, I that's how it is every year for me. Because I know a lot of you guys live down south or in places where it's warm. But, man, I gotta, I'm gotta, i going to have to go live somewhere for at least a year just to test it out to see what it's like to have it be December 14th and have it be sunny and warm out. I mean, God, the cold sucks here. It's already dropping down to 77 and... August is ending today. Yeah, it sucks. Then Juan Gonzalez said, Hey, Sim, it's awesome that the return of red light questions. Looking forward to the Q&A as always, Sim. Keep up the awesome work. Let's go, TTV East. Thank you so much for that, man. Dragman1 said, Glad to see you doing red light questions. I'm at the drag strip handing out ice pops today. Hopefully, I'll get to race the drag band. And I think you might have left this comment before. You had the nitrous back bar with the band. So I hope you get the thing put back together soon. And that's awesome that you're with the ice cream drag man handing out ice pops. That's so cool, man. Then for the final comment for this week's episode of Red Light Questions from Kevin L. Said, thanks, Sim, for bringing Red Light Questions back. I know we don't ask a lot of questions, but I enjoy the question and answer time. TTVE, just to let you all know, you don't have to leave questions. Just leave comments and we'll read them and discuss them in Red Light Questions. But that is all for this week's episode of Red Light Questions. I thank you all so much for watching TTVE. My current plan is to post these every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time because all of my videos go live at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. So make sure you guys click that little bell, turn the notifications on so you do not miss a single video that I upload. Make sure you tune in on Monday nights at 6.50 p.m. Central Standard Time for the live streams. Make sure you guys check out MidwestStreetCars.com and use coupon code SAMESXYZ for 20% off your order. First link down in the description will take you directly to their store. I also set up a PO box, so if you guys would like to send me stuff, address is down below in the description, and make sure you guys leave all of your comments, questions, concerns in the comment section down below, because in next week's episode of Red Light Questions, I try to read as many comments as I possibly can from this week's episode of Red Light Questions, but like I said, that is all. Thank you so much for watching TTVE. I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at SamesXYZ. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and this is Sim ABC XYZ signing out.